Welcome back. You're still watching the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, no fewer than 13 more bodies have been recovered from the ill-fated boat sailing from Mao 2 to Ibeche, a suburb of Lagos State on Saturday, bringing the total uh, dead recovered, dead bodies recovered to 17. Uh, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Zona Coordinator Southwest Ibrahim Farin Loye, made the disclosure in, state, in a statement he issued yesterday in Lagos. Uh, Farin Loye said that late yesterday, uh, that was on Saturday night, rather two more bodies had been recovered in addition to the two early recovered on, in the morning. Uh, with this, it is now a total of 17 bodies recovered so far. He says it has been found out that illegal operators are rendering services after the end of official hours of 7 p.m., thereby violating uh, the Inland Waterways Operation Rules. Now, I'm glad to say we have joining us this morning on breakfast, uh, Olua Dami Lola Emanuel. He's the general manager of the Lagos State Waterways. We're glad to have you. Uh, Mr. Emanuel, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be on um, online with you. It's um, a quite a, a sad tale. Um, so far, 17 lives lost, and these are, uh, uh, you know, people who probably were looking forward to seeing the end of the year and even the next year. Um, what's the, the status as we speak? Well, that's, uh, I think you just said it before we, we went on that um, those are the amount of bodies that have been found, um, 17, and um, very sad. We commiserate with those who have... Uh, who, who lost uh, these loved ones and the family. The state government has been over to um, the family in Ibishi um, and to commiserate with them. Hmm. Is, is the search still ongoing uh, for, for, for more yes. bodies? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we'll still search because, um, as you know, it was done at, an, you, you mentioned it was done at, at an illegal hour. Um, so the exact number, right, um, wasn't exactly known because they shouldn't have even set out at all at that point in time. Mm. Um, uh, what, what really happened? For, for those who, you know, are still trying to piece together, I know we've heard from Nema, we've also heard from uh, some officials, including yourself in the media. But can you help us unpack what really happened that led to... Uh, uh, this accident, uh, probably you might say the investigation is still ongoing, but for now, what can you say uh, happened and led to this accident, this mishap? Okay, first of all, um, there were a group of people who were all family related, apparently, um, and they were in the mile two axis, um, and then they saw it and decided to call for a boat from Ibeshe, their own community. Um, at a time which they knew they shouldn't have called for that boat. Um, so even that operator who also drove the boat and came to Ibeshi. Um, so what they did, because they knew they could not take off on any approved state or federal approved jetty, um, they looked for a land, a landing, because there are barge operations around that area. Um, and so what they did was look for a sort of landing, which obviously was not even very convenient. Um, so they called for a boat, which which I which normally should even take about nine to ten passengers. So 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 let's look at it this way. One, they called for a boat at the wrong hour. Secondly, they overloaded the boat they should have been on, and I'm very sure as well they didn't all have life jackets on them because even when the bodies were found, not all of them were found with life jackets. So they broke all of the rules of the waterways. And um, um, from those who were and um, those who were around the area who who from the bridge were trying to see them because normally when this kind of thing has happened, there would always be a rest boat around or something, but because it was an hours and it was obviously beyond the operational hours of even the boats, there was no rescue boat. So those who were looking at them sort of from the bridge said it looked like the boat's captain had set out um, and then was trying to, I don't know, probably toy with something and then the wave, because at that point in time, the waves were quite heavy and quite high, sort of moved him close to the barge and then that was the last they saw of them. That's what the story, of course, investigation will still reveal more of what happened. Um, but I said definitely was have been that the waves were the ones who sort of, and then what happens is that when the wave takes the boat like that, 
everyone sort of begins to panic because you are beginning to move left. And I remember that they're even overloaded. So naturally, you are just falling, you know, into the water. So but with the concern, let, let's get to, you know, uh, the crux of this issue now. Because there's been a lot of concern, and we know that the Lagos State Government had to, at some point mentioned the fact that uh, with the traffic situation, uh, which reports that about 95% uh, of persons go through road, transportation is done via road, and so there's need for diversification. People need to uh, use other options of transportation, and water would be one of the ways. So the question would be, um, if these persons did not move at the stipulated time, which was the reason for this accident, are we not supposed to have some level of regulation at this point in time? It would be government's responsibility regulating you know, the operation or the affairs of the waterways so that people would do the needful, just as you have with airways, uh, you also have, you know, with the road and what have you. Is that not what we should expect? Should we not expect some level of um, government presence regulating, um, you know, the safety on our waterways? That's on the one hand. And on the other hand, I'd like to ask, what's the capacity, you know, uh, of the state waterways because we know that at some point the corridors were very active there's some corridors so you have the uh, mile two to um, you know the marina access and and and, and the, the reports and findings showing that that's even nothing to write home about so, so how safe is it you know for water transportation and available for Lagosians? Thank you very much. Well, let, let, let's let's look at everything you said, um, and I'll sort of they're, they're all interrelated. So let me take it from where we are. Um, prior to now, years ago, we used to witness a minimum um, of ten to twelve accidents uh, in a year on the waterways. It was very prevalent. It was very frequent, and of course, the state government has to look at it and say, okay, what can we do to improve? these um, and of course reduce this amount of accidents and in the last three to four years i can say that we've seen those numbers drop by less than 50 percent and we're still not there yet and, and it was very intentional so what did we do one we increased the amount of state personnel which are at state approved right and also landing because the way the, the lagos state waterways is you have a lot of shores Unfortunately, so you can't exactly say because we have people who have homes just by the water. You know, some people who abandon their homes and say okay, their homes are no longer being used and they want to use it for, 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 for movement of water transportation. So there's a lot of land around the waterways in Lagos State, right? So what we've been able to do is one, increase the personnel who can adequately monitor everywhere where people are taken off from. So you usually find what we call our own water guards at these locations. Secondly, we also, of course, have a monitoring and a patrolling team which handles safety. In terms of security, we have to work with the Navy and the Marine Police to handle security of the waterways. We didn't, know, we didn't, we didn't then also stop there. We also went to one of the most important things on the water, which is the life jacket, which is a singular most important tool you should have on the waterways. That life jacket, in case of any emergency, will keep you safe. One, the state government, because it's a very capital intensive sector, the state government donates life jackets to even these operators as a form of subsidy to support them every year. We carry out awareness and sensitization of these life jackets as well, of, of course, of, of, of these life jacket wearing as well, as strategic locations as well. So there's been a lot of work done and that is why, like I mentioned earlier, we've seen it, yes, it's sad, that too happened just in, within a week. But prior to now, for example, in this year, I don't know whether you ever whether you heard it, whether there was any of, of any incident that happened. And, and like I mentioned before, it was a frequent thing of almost every other month we were having accidents. So we're not yet there. We'll continue to improve, and that's where we are. No, but the, the, the concern here is the fact that the reason for this accident, according to it, is that they had moved, you know, at the time where they're not supposed to move. There's a stipulated time, and so they move beyond that time. Shouldn't we have a body? Shouldn't we have some form of regulation and showing enforcement? We can't just fold their arms and allow you know, this person to engage. And so if we had people who would ensure that, oh, it's beyond the time that you should take off, and then you cannot go, maybe we would have actually avoided the incident. So that's where my question is. 
Good. I, I like the fact you mentioned that question, but let me also say this and put this back to you. If I was going on the road, right, and I know that I'm meant to stop by the red lights, right, and I don't stop by the red lights, and then I break the red lights, and my car get and my car gets into an accident, would we say at that point in time that there should have been a traffic warning, should have stopped you at that point in time? It's not an excuse for saying that um, we shouldn't form regulation, which is why I said to you, people would always break the rules. They always break the law. And that's why they have to face the full wrath of the law, which is why the last boat captain who was reckless in 2020, who was reckless and caused the loss of so many lives, has now been sentenced to life imprisonment. So, which, so any operator who breaks the rules, right, and is caught, unfortunately, the captain who did this lost his life in this incident. By now, he will have been in police custody and will have had to face the full wrath of the law for breaking all the rules. Mm. All right. We, we hear talk of um, illegal um, uh, uh, board operators. And this is still, still you know, almost um, similar to what Messi has been asking you. Um, with, with all the work that your, um, your, your, your office has been doing to, to sanitize the system, you talked about the legal state government giving free life jackets and all that. Um, uh, how come we have um, these illegal boat operators still, uh, you know, operating within the waterways of Lagos State? I, I reckon that they're not just operating under the cover of, of night or darkness, but even even in the daytime. Um, so why do we still have this challenge with uh, illegal uh, operators on the waterways in Lagos State? Yeah, I don't think we mentioned, I didn't use the word illegal operators. Um, no, no, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting the, um, the head of the Nigerian uh, Emergency Management Agency, the zonal coordinator Southwest, Mr. Ibrahim Farun Loye, uh, who disclosed that um, he says, quote, uh, it has been found out that illegal operators are rendering services uh, after the end of official hours, thereby violating inland waterway oper operations and rules. No, I would say, I would say they are operators who are, who are, operating within illegal hours. I will not necessarily call them illegal operators. So, because any illegal operator will be fished out, right? Um, and the waterways, to be honest, in as much as it's very wide, when, wherever you're functioning in, they usually have what we call associations. They must be registered with that association who registers with either the Lagos State Waterways Authority or the National Inland Waterways Authority. So they are recognized and they know. The name of, for example, this operator that I call illegal had a name on his boat. If you are illegal, you even avoid putting your name on your boat. The name is Jejelaye. So there's a name on the boat. Hmm. Uh, uh, what um, what what um, measures have been put in place? And we know that your office have you've been doing some work. Um, I mean, this is not to say you've not done anything at all. Uh, but but if this occurred in in the in the daytime, probably of course there still would have been in the same circumstances, the turbulence and all that on the waterways. There still may have been a mishap. Uh, what 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 measures are in place to to respond as quickly as possible um, to to such you know uh, tragedies uh, to such accidents in Lagos on Lagos waterways? Thank you very much. Um, so the measures that are in place are we just upgraded our emergency and rescue units, and what we did was to look at the two areas where we have massive traffic on a daily basis. We have the Korodu axis, and we also have the Ojo, which covers the Jekweba, covers Maotu, covers Badagri. So to deploy those two upgraded search and rescue units so that within five to seven minutes, right, we can respond. But we know that that five to seven minutes, anything will have happened. So what usually happens in an emergency, right, which will happen, which, um, which, which we saw um, even in the, in, in the incident prior to that as well was that they are always the first responders because the waterways is large. You have the fishermen, you have the loggers, you have the sand miners, you have, you know, you have different users of the waterways. And all of all these stakeholders are all within a community where if anything happens to anyone, they are always the first responders to say, oh, we need to move quickly while we then respond because we'll have probably gotten an emergency call or something like that. So we work with those um, look, especially the fishermen, the local fishermen, or and then and then the, the 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 sand miners. But then we also have our own upgraded search and rescue units as well. Mm -hmm. Is is it possible? I mean, the 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 um, the, 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 the the water spread and the the the, uh, the shoreline. Let me say is quite is quite long. Is it possible to have um, uh, you know a, a, an assessment 
of some of these jetties um, to see what to do. Um, because from what we, we hear, what you're saying, what Nema is saying, it may be clear that they didn't take off from a government-approved jetty. Uh, is, is it possible? Because I know the shoreline is quite large, and these are some of the challenges you face. But is it possible to have this monitoring in other parts of uh, outside absolutely. the official jet, yeah, jetty? I, 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 absolutely. So what we do with every incident is to review, right? And this is a developing sector, right? And we'll continue to improve. So one of the things we decided to do now is I'm sure you know the Lagos State Government has a neighborhood safety agency, which is the, um, the they used to be called um, um, Neighborhood Watch, but they are now the Neighborhood Safety Agency, right? So what we're then going to do, because our own official hours are, of course, from about 6.30 a.m., and then our own officers will leave the jetty at 7 p.m., because the last boat should have gotten there just about then or around 7 p.m., right? Okay. Now, this boat left okay. after 7 p.m. Oh. Yeah, so... So, so we will deploy um, the neighborhood safety who can then be on seven okay. um, until about 10 o'clock, watch over that space. And if they notice anything, of course, flag to marine police or the All Navy right. to be able to respond. We, we, we are afraid we, ha we have to go. Um, sincerely, this apology is, uh, you know, we have to because of time. But thank you so much for, for joining us and uh, for the insight you've given. Aloha Damilola Emmanuel, uh, General Manager of the Lagos State Waterways Authority. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much uh, for being part of the breakfast. Thank we, you. We uh, had a great time talking with you. And we look forward to having this conversation. Maybe we would like to dwell extensively, especially when we look at the fact that we need to diversify our means of transportation in the city of Lagos. Well, that's the size of it. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it would be all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel, at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. We're also on Limex TV. It's at www.limextv. And uh, you would definitely view us. I am Messi Bopo. Have a great morning. And I'm Kofi Bartels. Good morning.